If an unsymmetrical alkene is reacted with a hydrogen halide, such as hydrogen bromide, then there may be two possible products that can be formed. During the first step of the mechanism, when the carbon-carbon double bond breaks, the hydrogen can bond to either one of the carbon atoms from the double bond. For an unsymmetrical alkene, this means there are two possible carbocations that can be formed. Now, in the second step, there are two possible carbons that the halide ion can bond to, given two different possible products. For example, if propene reacts with hydrogen bromide, HBr, we can see that if the hydrogen bonds to carbon 1 in the propene molecule, carbon 2 will end up with a positive charge in the intermediate, a secondary carbocation. The bromide ion formed in step 1 will then bond to this carbon 2 and as a result, 2-bromopropane will get formed. 2, as the bromine group, bromo, is bonded to carbon 2 in the chain. However, if the hydrogen bonds to carbon 2 in the propene molecule, carbon 1 will end up with a positive charge in the intermediate, a primary carbocation. Now, the bromide ion will bond to carbon 1 in the intermediate, and 1-bromopropane, or just bromopropane, will get formed. When the reaction is actually carried out, there is much more 2-bromopropane formed than 1-bromopropane. This is because the secondary carbocation intermediate that leads to 2-bromopropane formation is more stable than the primary carbocation intermediate that leads to 1-bromopropane, making it easier and more likely to form. Any carbon groups bonded to the positively charged carbon in a carbocation are able to push electron density towards the positive charge. This is called a positive inductive effect. As electrons are negatively charged, electrons moving closer to the positive charge effectively stabilizes it and makes it slightly less positive. The carbons pushing electrons away will themselves become ever so slightly positive and the whole carbocation still has an overall positive charge. It is just that this positive charge is now spread out a little bit in the whole carbocation, making it more stable. Because of this, the more carbon groups there are bonded to a positively charged carbon, the more stable the carbocation is. Primary carbocations have less inductive effect than secondary carbocations, making them less stable, and tertiary carbocations have more inductive effect than secondary carbocations, making them even more stable. This positive inductive effect explains why more 2-bromopropane is formed than 1-bromopropane in our example. If the hydrogen bonds to carbon 2 in the first step of the mechanism, a primary carbocation intermediate is formed. If the hydrogen bonds to carbon 1, a secondary carbocation intermediate is formed. In the primary carbocation, there is only one carbon group bonded to the positively charged carbon, given a low amount of positive inductive effect. In the secondary carbocation, there are two carbon groups bonded to the positively charged carbon, giving more positive inductive effect and making the secondary carbocation intermediate more stable. If something is more stable in chemistry, it takes less energy to form and therefore the secondary carbocation is easier and more likely to form than the primary carbocation intermediate. Following step 2 of the mechanism, this would therefore produce more 2-bromopropane than 1-bromopropane. There will still be both products in the final reaction mixture, it's just more 2-bromopropane will be produced, meaning we call it the major product, and less 1-bromopropane will be produced, so we call it the minor product.